We have talked about this time and time again. Several other commentators have as well. I'm not going to try to uh, claim exclusive domain over this thought process, but Disney as a company, when it comes to the changing taste of the audience, is going to be the last monolithic entity in entertainment to actually course correct. It's so funny how people on the outside who used to be on the inside can properly assess the situation for what it is. And these are the people, not exactly fringe personalities, people that were intrinsic to the most successful period Disney has seen in my lifetime. And they can't positively make a change based on their reaction and here we are again add another name to the list little mermaid uh, hercules lion or i'm sorry aladdin my personal favorite disney renaissance movie director says disney needs course correction from a woke message no no disney's gonna be less political hey check out inside out too i'm sure it's not gonna have any messaging at all to it whatsoever legendary disney filmmaker john musker called out the walt disney court or walt disney company rather for putting political messages ahead of story in recent films recent films yeah okay that makes sense musker who co-directed some of the studio's most popular films in recent decades like the little mermaid absolutely aladdin again you know goes without saying and moana really really the moana that's going to be getting a sequel and a live action remake uh, i think production is supposed to be ramping up here very shortly for a live action moana because like we said before disney's going to be the last one to actually make some meaningful changes they still are under the impression that the rock is the biggest thing in hollywood uh commented on the slate of disney in a recent interview saying the company needs to steer away from pushing a woke message and focus on characters and story above all yeah exactly because okay in recent years for as overbearing as the message has been outside of the characters that they've either inherited from being a sequel to the original successful ip or adaptations of decades old material what actual characters have disney created that are memorable at all this is a huge problem that i have seen in a lot of entertainment it's just a lack of defined likable memorable characters across every medium when it comes to video games like a main character that has you know excelled and achieved a certain rank the conversation where they wouldn't look out of place with you know some of nintendo's highest ranking characters some of sony's highest ranking characters it's like the last person that can really think hopping up into that conversation maybe kratos and that was the mid 2000s uh joel from the last of us 2013 that might be a bit of a stretch especially as unceremoniously he was done in the crap of us part two but everything else is just all creative er, creative characters it's just all gameplay focused stuff which there's nothing wrong with that when it comes to video games but in the realm of television and movies like memorable characters on the same wavelength as like you know john mcclain ellen ripley anything approaching that i can't think of any literally like walter white and tv that's probably the original character that i can think of and that's a go-to and that's few and far between think of how many network shows that are out there right now and you can't even name one of them so yeah, if we just put a focus back on character, something that Disney could do in spades, because everybody knows Ariel is the Little Mermaid. Aladdin is the titular character. I haven't even seen Moana, and I know that the, the Moana is an important character, okay, especially for Disney. Every single one of those uh, Disney Renaissance movies has memorable, well-defined characters. Even if you haven't seen all of them, even if it's been decades since you've seen those films, you know those characters because Disney used to be masters at that. And then, well, they just decided not to prioritize characters, not to prioritize telling compelling stories with said characters, having compelling scripts, having witty dialogue. No, no, no. They were just uh, more concerned about um, social engineering. I think they need to... Uh, I think they need to do a course correction a bit in terms of putting the message secondary behind entertainment and compelling stories and engaging characters. Musker's told Spanish uh, outlet El, pa El Pai while at the Anamayo International Summit in Gran Canario last week. The director who also helmed 2019's The Princess and the Frog. That's another one that at least had a lasting impact. Alongside co-director Ron Clemens, who, uh, I'm sorry, got onto the subject 
act of wokeness at Disney by bringing up the criticism about the film uh, about a black princess was woke. But to be honest, that wasn't really a conversation being had at the time back in 2009. We weren't trying to be woke, although I understand the criticism, Musker said, following with the commentary that more recent films seem to be opting for messaging, or yeah, for message over story. Exactly. Classic Disney films didn't start out with trying to have a message. You wanted to get involved in the characters and the story in the world, and I think that's still at the heart of it. You don't have to exclude agendas, but you have to first create characters who sympathize with and who are compelling. Disney is facing significant backlash in recent years for critics arguing that the media giant has promoted a woke agenda. That's a, that is definitely a fair resuscitation of the facts. But in reality, they've been very much doing it. Okay, it's called the not so secret agenda. <clears throat> and it's front and center, most blatantly revealed for the world to see. Oh yeah, one of those films that Musker originally worked on in 89. Yeah, I got the remake treatment and did Ariel look like Ariel in the remake? Yeah, I don't think so. Its uh, corporate leaders have repeatedly clashed with conservative lawmakers, most notably, yes, Ron DeSantis. It's like, yeah, this guy has every reason, right? John Musker has every reason to say, no, 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 Disney's always been woke because I worked on Aladdin and we had Arab characters that were in there and be them being Arab was intrinsic to our storytelling when in reality really not and it resonated with the world because guess what okay it's not that people are scared of diversity they don't want to see inclusion it just needs to be done right it just needs to be done honestly how many has experienced box office disappointments like 2022's pro lgbtq lightyear and elemental well that was pixar right well so was lightyear lightyear was pixar and pixar just meant went through a massive round of layoffs which eventually i'll have to get around to talking about that this just all works its way together right pixar lays off like 11 percent of their company the biggest layoff in their history and why well because they put out light year in 2022 strange world at the end of that year being cataclysmic bombs elemental not doing anything and yeah you got inside out 2 coming this year i'm pretty sure that that's a pixar joint and well what do you think that's going to do what, what do you think they laid off like a few hundred people that work at Pixar? Massive layoffs and a loss of 2.4 million subscribers from its Disney Plus streaming service. Yeah, but eventually guys, don't worry, Disney Plus is going to turn a profit. Musker noted the political agenda was never as aggressive at Disney during its heyday in the 90s and 2000s as it is now, but he did have to alter some content for the sake of political correctness, which, yes, was very much running rampant in the uh, in the mid to late 90s, right? Like, that was the first little uh, peak, but then it eventually did get knocked down. But now, well, been living in the afterglow of that, he told El Pai that uh, he... Had to change the name of the city of Baghdad to Agraba in Aladdin because of the Gulf War happening at the time. And yeah, everything else is so fantastical that I guess making real world illusion, like you could understand that. But again, that also is a story with the magic carpet and a genie and an anthropomorphic monkey. So yeah, you know, and Raja the tiger. Anyways, uh, because of the war, you couldn't even go there to do research. Interesting. Our big research took place in Saudi Arabian Expo at the Los Angeles Convention Center. All right, fair. But you still did a hell of a good job, okay? And the, the, iconogra the iconography that you created all the way back in the day is still referenced in a lot of media that's out there. I just love Aladdin, okay? It's actually one of the most based and red-pilled stories of the Disney Renaissance, okay? The fact that good old Al wasn't given, a time, wasn't given the time of day by the princess until he w spent one of his wishes from the genie. After risking his life going into the Cave of Wonders to get the genie lamp, he had to wish to get out of the cave. He had to wish to become a prince only to simply get the attention of the female princess of the story. It goes to show you that, yeah, you could be the best guy in the world, but if you don't scratch that hyper, yeah, the hypergamous itch for a woman, she's not going to pay you the time of day. Just, yeah, eventually does fall apart when it's revealed that he's not exactly a prince because how many chicks would you just immediately start to cry catfish, especially in 2024? Then, I don't know, make a, make a Me Too allegation against Diago for, you know, touching her hair inappropriately. But those were the conversations that we could have instead of just having open trans propaganda shoved down our throat on 
somewhat intended but yeah man uh, he's not wrong the genius behind some of the most successful cinematic endeavors isn't wrong with the current state of the industry isn't wrong about the current state of disney but if we have been doing this long enough we have been doing this long enough to realize that disney yeah ain't about to get off their messaging kick anytime soon so with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone